Hi, this is John with Cloth Guru, and today we're going to be creating this image, which I've titled Red Silk, and I'm going to show you two different ways to make this image. We're going to go through it pretty fast, so if you have any questions or if I miss something, go ahead and leave a comment, and I will try and clarify for you. So we're going to start creating this image by going into Autodesk Maya. This is one way you can create the image. And we're going to go ahead and go to our Polygons menu, and I'm going to go and create a ground plane. And we're going to scale this up so it's a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and move it up so it's above the grid here. And we also are going to give it some subdivisions, which some, for some reason this doesn't always grab on my mouse. There we go. So we've given it some subdivisions, and we're going to use this as our ground plane to collide with. So let's create another plane. We'll go ahead and bring this up. This is going to be our cloth. We'll scale it up just a little bit. And I'm going to give it some subdivisions as well. Come on. There we go. We'll give it some subdivisions. We'll give it about 20. And we're going to make this our cloth. Let's go ahead and assign it a material. Actually, let's do that through here. We'll go to rendering grab a blend we'll go ahead and give it just to give it a color actually we can just give it a yellow there and that way we can see the difference between our ground plane and our cloth so now we go to the end cloth and we'll create this as an end cloth and we'll create the ground plane as a collider with our shelf buttons there and I'm move this cloth more towards the center here and now we can press play to watch this cloth simulate but we don't get much that's very interesting. We're going to have to do some work to actually make the wrinkles and things that uh, we want to see in this piece of cloth. So the first thing you can do is rotate the cloth so that it's not falling straight down. So we want it to fall and actually start buckling to give us some nice interesting wrinkles. So if we drop it on its corner like this, you'll notice immediately we start to get some more cloth-like behavior and that's a lot more of what we want but we're having a problem here with a lot of sliding on our collision surface so we can fix that by selecting our collider and upping the friction so just pump it up to something like 0.7 or something like that and all of a sudden you'll see that your cloth doesn't slide around as much but we're still not getting kind of the frequency of detail that we need here in this cloth. And I found with end cloth that this pretty much is held true for any project I've done with end cloth is you have to increase the resolution fairly high to get wrinkles that actually are working um, for production. So there are a couple different ways that we can increase the frequency of wrinkles. We can increase the resolution of the mesh, which we will do. But one thing that we're going to do first is go into our Nucleus node, and we're going to change the scale attribute. So this is not actually um, used often. Um, and most people don't know about the space scale, but what this does is it essentially scales the forces in your solver so that the cloth will either be bigger or smaller essentially. So if I put this like to something like 0.3 for example and I simulate this you'll notice immediately I get much more response in my cloth. It's buckling and it's wrinkling with a much greater frequency and that's because this cloth is now simulating as if it were larger in scale. So the space scale is a great way to add extra detail if you don't care about um, the way your cloth's moving. So in this particular case, we're making a still image. It doesn't matter that we've messed with the scale because we're not going to be looking at this cloth simulating in motion. If we did care about that, changing the space scale would matter a lot because it would change the way the cloth actually looks when it's simulating. It would make it look like it was a bigger piece of cloth. But for now, this is just it's just functioning to help add more detail quicker. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to increase the resolution of this cloth to start really pumping up the detail. 
So what we can do in here is we can come and we can show our input mesh. And we'll go ahead and we will go to edit mesh and we'll add divisions here. And let's, let's just do that um, again as well. Let's add more divisions. So I found you need to you need to make a lot of divisions to really get the frequency of detail that you're going to want. Oh, and we have our input mesh displayed. Let's go ahead and let's display our current mesh again. And now if we press play, you'll notice this mesh simulating. And you'll see as soon as it hits, we start to get a lot of buckling and a lot more detail. And that's what we want. But you'll also notice that this sim has become quite slow already. Um, one of the drawbacks of NCloth is that it is very slow. Um, I haven't ever found a way around that. <laughs> it's just always been quite slow compared to other solvers that I've used. Um, it does give good, good results though. But you'll notice even though we've upped the resolution on this mesh, I still don't have enough detail really to describe these folds the way they need to be described. Now I could use a subdivision surface, you know, and subdivide this further to to make these nice and smooth and actually display something nicer. But if I wanted to simulate these wrinkles, I'm going to have to pump this resolution up pretty high. And so let me open up a scene where I've actually done that. I actually found that I had to increase the resolution to a pretty ridiculously high number. So it looks like we are at about 80,000 tries with this particular uh, mesh. And this simulates incredibly slow. I think to get my final simulated cloth, it probably took me about an hour. Um, and I have a fairly fast machine. So what it looks like, though, when it's finished simulating, and you'll notice, I should mention this, I added a couple spheres in here so that when this actually falls and simulates, it hits these spheres, which help it fold over itself to get some more buckling and interesting uh, effects. So that's something you might want to do as well, is add those spheres in. So now if we look at this guy, let's look at it from the camera I've set up here, we've got some really cool looking buckling. And you'll see how high I had to up the resolution to actually get this to, to fold this way. And then we can go ahead and we can render this. We set up a camera here in Maya, I've set up a light, you know, you'll see this light in here, and all I've done is I've put an anisotropic shader on here, and I've messed around with the specular shading, you know, played around with this angle a little bit. And when you go ahead and you render this in Mental Ray, it looks something like this. So one other thing that I've done uh, to help out with the lighting a little bit, which is a nice tip to know about, is here in Mental Ray, I have added some image-based lighting, and I've turned on global illumination. So if you go here to your image-based lighting and create an image-based light, I've added an HDR texture in here, and I'll put a link to where I got that texture um, in the description of this video on clothguru.com, so you can get it yourself. But that helps add a lot of ambient light into the scene. So that's how we might do this in Maya. Let's look at how we could do it in another software package. Let's look at Marvelous Designer. I'm going to go ahead and close Maya here so it doesn't steal any more system resources. And we will open up Marvelous Designer here. So inside Marvelous Designer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drag out a plane. Here's my plane. Let's actually scale it down a little bit. I don't need it quite so big. And Marvelous Designer is really great because it's wickedly fast. Um, unlike waiting an hour for NCloth, I can just hit the simulation button here in Marvelous Designer and I've got my cloth sitting on the ground like that. 
it's already got some interesting wrinkles. So what happens if I rearrange this and I drop it on a corner? Like so. Hit simulate. And you'll notice already that we get some really cool stacking and we get some really nice looking bunching happening in here in our cloth. And what's cool about Marvelous Designer, if we want, we can come in here and we can drag this cloth around in real time and change what it looks like. So with Marvelous Designer, it is incredibly fast to get this kind of look. And then we could let this relax a little bit more. But you see already, I've got a lot of detail in here. And what I can do is I can increase the particle distance on this mesh so that there's more resolution and then hit the simulate button and let it relax for a couple of frames so it gets nice and smooth. Give it a couple more frames here. But you'll notice it unfolding and getting nice and smooth and looking all cool. So I might let this simulate a little bit more, you know, to smooth it out a little bit more, but you'll see how quickly we've created a very complex look with minimal time. I mean, that was maybe, what, a minute worth of work. So now we can export this and we can render it in a different package. So let's go ahead and bring it into Blender here, which is where I rendered the original image. So here's my cloth. And let me quickly show you how we shaded this. So it's a very easy, easy to make shader. Oh, I got to get my uh, keys right because I've been in Maya. So all we have, we have a glossy shader, a subsurface scattering shader, a diffuse shader. Okay, and we've created these through our add shader menu in here: diffuse, glossy, and subsurface right there you got to make sure you're on the Cycles Render Engine. Remember that. And then I go ahead and create those shaders. The roughness for the glossy is 0.39. That is different from the default. And then I've mixed the subsurface and the diffuse with this factor of 0.392. And you'll notice the color I've used here for the subsurface, kind of a dark red. The diffuse is kind of a lighter red, almost pink. And then I've mixed those together almost half and half. And I've plugged that into my surface output here. Then I have created a bump map. And you can do that here from your add menu. And I've used this image texture down here that has kind of a plain weave. Um, actually, that's not a plain weave, but it's this weave texture um, that I've added in. And that is creating a little bit of a displacement on there, a little bit of a bump map. And so when we go ahead and we render this inside of Cycles, it looks just like this. And I'll have to say that rendering this in Cycles is a lot faster than rendering it in Mental Ray as well. So definitely uh, worth uh, trying out. The other thing to mention in here is that on my World node here, in cycles I've added a sky texture so you can do that by clicking on the color and adding sky texture and what that does is it just adds a, um, a sky in your scene so if I zoom out here you can see there's a sky and I've added a couple of planes to give some light to this um, to this piece of cloth here so these planes here have a material on them that's just an emission material and they're both contributing 30 um, as far as their uh, their lighting contribution but then my sky texture is adding kind of an ambient fill and I've turned on ambient occlusion as well to fill in some of the darker areas and that is the way we get our cloth image so that about wraps it up for this tutorial I went really quickly but I just wanted to show you a couple of different ways to arrive at this image um, both ways will work and there you know there are other ways you can possibly do it as well um, but I think it's interesting to contrast the two ways of doing it between Maya and Marvelous Designer and just how quick 
you know one is versus the other um, they both have both solvers and cloth and marvelous designer have their strengths um, and their weaknesses and we'll go ahead and we'll talk more about those in some of our other videos but I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment and I will be happy to answer them